a lesson in life at the top of baseball's food chain. With veteran all-stars anchoring a balanced attack, Detroit's machine is firing on all cylinders. Today, the Astros roll out their newest pitching model in the hopes of grinding that machine to a halt. Lance McCullers takes on Miggy and the Tigers next. Comerica Park in Detroit, Michigan. The Houston Astros look to turn things around after losing the first two games of this series to the Tigers. The Strohs send rookie right-hander Lance McCullers to the mound to get it done today. Right here, right now on Ruth Sports. Hi, everybody. Alan Ashby and Jeff Blum with you. And it has been a little bit of a tough series to this point. The bats for the Astros in this pitcher's ballpark have been quiet to this point, Blummer. Yeah, the uh, opening uh, game in this series against David Price was pretty tough task. They scored five runs, didn't have enough in the end. But, uh, yeah, it's been a tough go on this road trip so far. On the flip side, the Tigers have been swinging some very good bats. And they're a team known for swinging the bats well. But uh, this series is certainly confirming that they are on that move. Yeah, Yellowwood is bringing the lumber. And it's those Detroit Tigers in this two-game set. The 25 hits is a lot, but it shouldn't be shocking. They are second in the American League with a 280 batting average as a team. But those three home runs are the one that shocked me. They haven't been driving the ball out of the ballpark all season. They're tied for 11th with 37 home runs. You assume it's going to be the Astros that are hitting all those home runs, but they haven't done it quite yet. Five days ago, the Astros had a new right-hander come up from the minor leagues, Lance McCullers. He pitched well against the Oakland A's, didn't quite get five innings in. But I thought overall he was rather impressive. He gets the big assignment today. Yeah, we know he's got electric stuff. A lot of the highlight videos coming out of the minor leagues showed a great fastball in the mid-90s, an excellent curveball. But for me, that pitch right there that you just saw, that changeup could be the great equalizer for him that puts him over the hump and turns his second start into a great start for the Houston Astros. Coming up, there's been a plethora of offensive heroes for the Astros this year, but there's no question that Jose Altuve is the straw that stirs the drink. Julia Morales joins us to talk about just how important Altuve is when we return.
are set to begin in just a few minutes. Astros down in this series. Two games and looking to come back. And if they want to do that, they're going to need some bats to get hot from a couple of different players like Jose Altuve. We saw Altuve get off to such a great start hitting 367 in the month of April. Well, he's definitely cooled off in the month of May so far. And only one for nine in this series against Detroit. So looking to turn things around. He's working on making a couple of adjustments that we may see today. But you see the numbers there in the first 31 uh, against the last 12 games. Only 167. Not Altuve-like. And this franchise has definitely become accustomed uh, to a certain level of playing from the defending batting champ there. But the Astros could really use that bat if they want to continue to play the way they have thus far. Jack in the box inside the box score right here, here tells us the Astros are 5-9. and nine. When he doesn't get a hit, check out the difference in the average there. 339 in the wins, 226 in those 16 losses. Now, that's a lot of pressure, uh, but like I said, the defending AL batting champ right there is one that nobody in the clubhouse is worrying about. AJ saying it's only, you know, in a matter of a week, he can turn it around and be right back where he wants to be, and they definitely hope that starts today. Guys, a lefty on the mound for Detroit. Ash, can we see a turnaround? We certainly hope so, Julia, and sorry about the little delay right there. But, yeah, it, the Astros have been really quiet. Two guys picking up two hits apiece yesterday, Castro and Springer, and that was it on the evening. And so uh, A.J. Hinch and company would love to see these bats come alive once again. Again, the Astros' blummer come in here as the kings of the home run. And it, uh, it's been anything but that kind of a club here in the first couple of games. Yeah, usually the ballpark doesn't affect these guys. They've got that much pop, but I know that. Not having that young man right there on the base pads causes some issues because when those long balls go out and they turn into solo home runs, it's tough to come back. But when he's on base, turns those home runs into multiple run hits, makes it nice, maybe chasing a little too many pitches right now, trying to be too aggressive to get this Astros offense going. Well, today's Astros starting lineup is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. And you know A.J. Hinch would love to see this thing get red hot again. Jose Altuve in the top spot. He's at second. Third baseman Jonathan VR bat second and George Springer in the three spot. He's in right field. Middle three in the order. Evan Gaddis, he's the DH. Preston Tucker bats fifth and plays in left field. And at first base, Chris Carter. And boy, if anybody needs to light it up, it's Chris Carter. Bottom three in the order. Jason Castro, he does the catching. At shortstop, Marwin Gonzalez. And Jake Marisnik is in center field. For the Detroit Tigers, you're going to see Kyle Lobstein, the left-hander, making his eighth start on the season. Pitches pretty well at home in his first four home starts this season. Lobstein is, or he doesn't pitch that good at home. I'm sorry. One and three record, 5.32 ERA. Fastball, curveball, cutter, changeup. But a lot of those pitches are going to be coming into those right-handed batters for the Houston Astros. Well, the Astros bats would love to make Lobstein a little bit sorry here this afternoon. Nice crowd filling in the stadium. It's a gorgeous place here at Comerica Park and a gorgeous day. A couple of back-to-back -back days that really make you glad to play a ball game. Lobstein's first pitch hit on the ground left side. Backhanded by Iglesias. And he gets his man. Or did he? I thought he was out. Yeah, I took the just the cursory glance. Why is Altuve running to the dugout when he was called safe? Even he thinks he's out. Yeah, and the crowd here in Detroit wondering the same thing. It's a base hit for Jose Altuve. You know, let's see what this looks like. You know what these replays are doing for me in scoring? It's making me want to use a pencil. So for the moment, infield single. Let's see what we can see here. Oh, yeah, that's going to get turned around. Yep. Well, that's what I thought I saw with the naked eye, and I apologize for jumping the gun there, but yeah. apparently you saw the same thing. No, no, I completely did. I put my head down. Yeah, that's going to turn into a 6-3, and unfortunately for Altuve, this is a lot of what is going on. A lot of ground balls, especially on the left side for Altuve. Bob Davidson is that first base umpire. Buck and Bob uh, might get embarrassed by the results on this one when it's all said and done. Yeah, they've got a couple of really good replays on this on the big screen already. Much like the ones we've seen on our own screens. Altuve out by a half step at least. There goes the fist up, and so Altuve is out. And 
Jose probably didn't help his own cause by circling toward the first base dugout after going by the bag. Yeah, but still credit him for yeah. having a lot of hustle, making that play close as we look at the rest of the defense behind Lobstein here at Comerica Park. Out in left field, Joanna Cespedes goes in center. Martinez out in right field across the infield. Nick Castellanos, Jose Iglesias, Ian Kinsler, Miguel Cabrera, of course, at first base, and James McCann back behind home plate for the third straight game, and he's working with Kyle Lobstein today. Lobstein misses away, is showing bun is Jonathan VR. Just 85 miles an hour, and Lobstein is not a hard thrower. So the Astros' bats may be a chance to take some big swings. There's a big swing and a solid hit as it goes on by the drawn-in Castellanos at third base. And a big turn at first as VR takes a good look at the possibility of the double. I think Cespedes does that on purpose. Try and lull those guys into trying for two, and then he whips out the cannon and throws them out. He's got a pretty good arm in left field. Yeah, you're talking about Lobstein's velocity. Believe it or not, I think that was a fastball at 86 miles an hour. That seems to be the average on the season for him. So Jonathan Villar gets the start today. Swings it from the right side and gets the solid base hit. George Springer at the plate with one out. And George takes the ball. 50 seconds on that replay, so not bad at all. And I mean, how many times would you have to take a look at that to call out? So th there's got to be moments where they put the headset on, look at the big screen in the ballpark, and they can make the call yeah. themselves. I think we're ready to go, New York. <laughs> VR with the lead. Tigers yesterday overtook the Astros in stolen bases. For the Astros as a club, they've stolen 39 now in second place. Ian Kinsler, one of the guys that runs so well for the Tigers. Jonathan VR has run well, limited, however, three for three in the stolen base game, and now it's three and zero on Springer. When you've got quiet bats, there's an inclination sometimes to say, "Okay, let's be patient and draw some walks." I wonder, would you be inclined to give George Springer the green light and get a big swing early? There it is. I like it. You're uh, this day and age. With the way these pitchers are going out there, they usually have those secondary pitches that they can throw in hitters' counts. And by hitters' counts, I mean 2-0 and 3-1. But why not in the 3-0 count? Yep. Go ahead and attack that fastball because that's a, pretty much a guaranteed fastball in the strike zone. Was that the fastball that got thrown by the bat of yep. Springer? Goodness. Uh, I don't know if it was by him. I think it was may have been a click out in front. Well, I it, yeah, I, I use the term thrown by just to mean he didn't didn't make contact, but... Yeah, a lot of times you, you kind of come out of the slump by swinging the bats, maybe on the three O's, maybe the running game. Tiger's concerned about VR. He does not go. Ground ball up the middle. Backhanded by Kinsler. They'll get him out, and they'll get another double play. And spectacular style. Kinsler gets it started. Iglesias with the throw on to Cabrera, and there's the double play to end the first inning.
shortstop Iglesias to get a double play to end that top of the first inning. As the fans have a good time here, Brad Osmus will line up his Tigers this way. Anthony goes in the top spot, hitting 331. Ian Kinsler at 302. You can go on and on with these batting averages. Miguel Cabrera is a red hot hitter now, 342. The cleanup man, JD Martinez, homered in last night's game. Joanna Cespedes follows. And then Nick Castellanos, the third baseman. The bottom three, Tyler Collins, he's the DH. Doing the catching, a big man with the bat here in the series, James McCann, and at shortstop, Jose Iglesias. Lance McCullers going for the Houston Astros. Only making his second career start. See what he did there against Oakland. Pitched well through a lot of pitches. I have a feeling that the adrenaline might have been pumping a little bit. Got a little erratic, but still did a good job of racking up the strikeouts. Five strikeouts in that four and two-thirds. Down in the minor leagues, he pitched 29 innings and had 43 strikeouts. So the stuff is obviously there. It's just a matter of how he can harness it, make it be effective. Like you said, Ash, this will be a tough lineup to go up against. Lance McCullers, the 41st pick, first rounder by the Astros. As the first pitch hit in the air to left field, but a nice job. As Preston Tucker gets there quickly to make the play. One pitch, one out here in the bottom of the first. Time for some defense. We already saw Preston Tucker out there in left position perfectly. Jake Marisnik out there in center. George Springer in right. On the left, Jonathan Villar at third base. And Marlon Gonzalez at short. Jose Altuve at second base. Chris Carter again at first base. Jason Castro working with the youngster, Lance McCullers. So we just mentioned McCullers, 41st pick, first rounder by the Astros. That was 2012 when the Astros also in the first round with the first pick overall. Got Carlos Correa, who continues to tear up AAA. Now, a pretty good first round in 2012 for the Astros. Ian Kinsler takes away. It's a ball and a strike. Just easy cheese from Lance McCullers. Got to 94, 95 in that first couple of innings in that first start. Five days ago against the Oakland A's. According to the early numbers on Lance, it was averaging around 93 and a half miles an hour. Yeah, that's probably about what we saw. The numbers after the second inning appeared to drop off a bit. 96. So adrenaline is working strongly here this afternoon. The Astros need to take today's game and tomorrow's to split the series with the Tigers. And the Astros get the punch out here from Lance McCullers. Down looking goes Ian Kinsler. That's two outs here in the inning. The Astros would love to get it hot once again. Kind of a confidence builder would it be for a guy like Lance McCullers to come in here and stop this little mini losing streak the Astros are on. If he can be consistent in 95 down around the knees, that's going to be effective. Yeah, that's good looking stuff. And not only would it be good for the confidence of Lance McCullers, I would think for the Astros to see a guy step in from the minor leagues and be able to do that sort of work would be a, a big booster. Hey! Miguel Cabrera stands in. Always a tough assignment. I don't care what your pedigree is on the hill. If you're going to get this big guy, you are doing some kind of work. And that's why. Just consistently in those triple crown numbers every single year. Fastball drilled into the gap in right center field. So Cabrera added once again as he lines a base hit. Two out single brings up J.D. Martinez. That's 11 straight hit in by the yeah, well, a lot of people would say best hitter in Major League Baseball. It's still pretty easy to make that argument. Watch how he brings his hands in nicely on this 94-mile-an-hour fastball in the inner third. Brings those hands through so nice and still able to barrel it up. You've got to be a pretty special hitter to be able to do that. Cabrera now with five hits in the series. Was two for three yesterday. Also drew a walk. He's walked twice in the series. And now it's J.D. Martinez. And Martinez was the big man with the bat. Big three-run home run to right field. Oh. That slider 
At least early in the ball game, last time out for McCullers started launching upward. Right there looks pretty good. Well spotted heater at 95. Tell you what, if that gun is on the money right now, you're talking about the type of stuff that can stack up with just about anybody. Good slider. And got him. A couple of strikeouts in the first inning as J.D. Martinez is down. Cabrera with the base hit. He's stranded. We've played one scoreless. Right now at southwest.com. And by Jack in the Box. Try the new buttery Jack Burgers at Jack in the Box with melted garlic herb butter. Yeah, a lot of folks still lingering outside here at Comerica Park. Still want to call it Tiger Stadium in Detroit. Julia did a nice piece yesterday. At Tiger Stadium, the old ballpark, and they still play some ball over there. Set for the second inning. Left-hander Kyle Lobstein with that first pitch. As Evan Gaddis stands in, 0 for his last five. The DH this afternoon. Does have eight big home runs. But you look through what the Astros are doing in the heart of the order. And quite frankly, it's hard to figure out how they have strung together so many wins this year until you start to look at how the numbers have combined. The home runs, obviously, the big factor to go along with the pitching and what the bullpen has been able to do. High fly ball right field. J.D. Martinez will make the catch and out number one here in the second. What's going on? We can feel a little bit of a breeze here in the booth coming in on us. The flags don't say there's a whole lot going on. You have any feel for this ballpark, Blummer, as to what the flags might mean? Anything for the hitters? I wish I could say that I do, but I really don't. I didn't play enough games here to really understand. I played some games early in the year. I played some games in the dead of summer here. But I uh, really don't have an answer for you, Ash. I apologize. No, no, that's good. Uh, I mean, I could just lie. Making up stuff works yeah. sometimes. Hot shot, but with that shift on, able to make the play is the third baseman, Castellanos. Uh, you can check the box score later or the, uh, the score sheet, and you'll see five threes that don't seem to make any sense. Preston Tucker erased on the ground out. That's two outs here in the second inning. Chris Carter, over his last eight now, will stand in. Seven bombs on the year, 20 RBIs. How's that set of numbers work for you, Blummer? 
Well, I know Chris is concerned about it, much like a lot of us are, especially the batting average. I know that I keep saying that it's one of the more overrated numbers, but at the same time, if it starts dropping below that 220 mark for me, that, that that's a cause for concern. And right now, Chris Carter's 60, 70 points underneath that number. That's quite a bit. And we're now starting that second quarter of the season. And so, yeah, you're kind of at the point where you feel like you're you're starting to settle some numbers in a bit. Carter swings through the 2-1. And the coaching staff, along with A.J. Hinch there, scratching their chins. Hot shot, and that's into left field. Chris Carter has the Astros' second hit of the afternoon. Two out single here in the second inning to go with VR's base hit in the first. It's just one hit, but sometimes one hit leads to a, a whole lot of hits to follow. Well, how many times have we said that? Hopefully this might be the one. Change up down and away. Does a good job of staying on it. The guy's not throwing that hard. Obviously you can see the ball for a little bit longer and your hands can drift a little bit longer and still be able to Get the barrel on it, hit that line drive out there to left field like Chris did. Jason Castro now stands in. Castro hitting 229, does have five home runs, just eight RBIs on the year, and the Tigers employ the shift. Shortstop Jose Iglesias plays on the left side. That means in each shift scenario for Detroit, they send their third baseman Castellanos into shallow right field. Wow, look at that bomber. Yeah, that number, that number is meant to be broken very soon. Jason Castro is just the man to do it, too. Ball and a strike. I hate to quit harping, I mean, keep harping on Chris Carter, but looking through his season, guess how many multi-hit games he has? Oh, dear. Uh, two? Two. And they were two-hit games. So nothing beyond a, a, a two-hit game. So really, there hasn't been a moment of getting hot at all. A little ground ball creates the fielder's choice, and that'll do it as the Astros go down in the second inning. Scoreless ball game. The 2015 Insurance MLB All-Star Game Ballot is open, and for the first time ever, it is online only. Vote for your favorite Astros today by visiting astros.com slash vote. Lance McCullers back on the mound and is not wearing the Batman logo cleats. MLB saying no to that, but there are some things that he wanted to carry over from that first start in the big leagues, and one of the things was being more efficient. We saw him do that after giving up a couple walks earlier. He settled in and had a couple of shutdown innings. That was good for him. Brent Strom, the pitching coach, said there wasn't much that 
they worked on in between starts, just wanted him to have better command of that breaking ball, which would be important today. AJ also said about Lance, he doesn't want him pitching for his life in these couple of starts, thinking uh, the only impression he can make is tonight's or, or today's impression. Uh, but they are trying to look for somebody to take over that number five spot, guys. And right now it's his opportunity. Thanks, Julia. And, and I think uh, if you're looking at pure stuff, you have to be very impressed with Lance McCullers right away. High strike, not called. It's 2-0. Ioannis Cespedes leads off in the second inning, followed by Nick Castellanos and Tyler Collins. He's not a big guy physically, but he's got a big arm. And I, for one, don't mind seeing a guy that has exceptional talent try to go ahead and bring that exceptional talent. I Go ahead and bring the good fastball and let it air out on the Tigers. Two and two the count. Yeah, but that, I think that conversation Julia had with, with Stromy about throwing that good breaking ball, number one, it's a good breaking ball that he has. Absolutely. It's, it's ex exceptional stuff, but to pitch at this level, he does have that electric fastball, but you've got to have that secondary pitch to be able to put guys away and keep them off balance. Little chopper third base side. It's a foul ball outside the back. No, I, I'm in com complete agreement. It, it, it's just that when a guy has a fastball that can go 95-plus, now it sets up for a better, tougher slider and a better uh, changeup, whatever it may be that follows with it. And I, I, I think that's the kind of guy that can be the big-time pitcher. Now, Dallas Keuchel has become a big-time pitcher without that kind of stuff, but it takes a lot of perfection there to get it done. And he can, and McHugh's a guy that can command three yes. pitches in the strike zone. That's what makes him effective is that hitters can't key on one pitch. Fouled back again. Two and two on Cespedes. And that's the thing. I don't care how hard you throw. If a guy can sit on, or a if not just a guy, but a major league hitter can sit on a fastball, it doesn't matter how hard you're throwing it, they're going to hit it. Guys always talk about turning up the dial, and in effect, you can do that. Most guys can. Yeah. And now three and two. Cespedes, excuse me, Blummer in the that's first right. game went three for three with a couple of walks. Yesterday, 0 for 4. Well, I think for major league hitters, I remember when I came up, that was one of the things is a lot of pitchers challenged you because they wanted to see if you could hit the fastball. If you couldn't, then you were going to get lost in the big leagues. Cespedes gets a piece of it and fouls it back. 95 on the heater. Let's see how long he can maintain that mid-90s type of velocity. You know what a, a big difference is? A 3-2. Saspedes was probably pretty close to dead red right there, and he still couldn't quite get the barrel to that thing. It's a good sign. Man. You can also watch a really good fastball, and it it takes a different line to the plate than a guy who throws 88. It's just a... It feels like a true straight line just planing right toward the plate. Slider hit on the ground and bobbled momentarily. VR with a high throw and safe with the bag is Cespedes. Likely an E5 to start this second for the Tigers. I agree. And it is an E5. And VR not your everyday third baseman. That's what creates some of the issues right here because he panics just a hair, and that's what leads to that high throw is when you try and rush your throw after bobbling the ball, it has a tendency to come out of your hand a little bit hot. Credit Cespedes for running down there. He was in the right position, just yeah. couldn't get the handle. And he's been much better. A lot of the work in the infield this year has really seemingly been paying off, especially at shortstop. But now a man aboard that Cespedes for Nick Castellanos. Comes in with a modest three-game hitting streak. Hitting 240 on the air, four home runs. Saspidis doesn't run a lot. He's stolen three bags, one here in the series. Shift on for Castellanos, and now a 1-1 count. It was Castellanos in game one of this series that hit the long ball. He was two for four in that game. Four big RBIs. Game that went 11 innings. Ground ball left side. Can VR get the double play started? 
easily. VR to Altuve and back to Carter. So 5-4-3. And that's two down here in the second inning. Good play by VR, making the error on that previous ground ball. Usually good infielders are out there begging to have one more hit out of especially with that runner at first base, so you're able to redeem yourself. And he does so right there, showing some maturity, able to come back and make that double play. You know, that's a really good point in my opinion. Everybody's going to make an error. We saw Ian Kinsler make a big one in the series. But you have to be able to come back and make the play when you're presented with another opportunity. Shift on now for Tyler Collins, the DH. Hitting 286. Fastball is drilled but hooked foul down the right side. Collins has just one career at bat against the Astros. Had an at bat in game one here in the series. That struck out in that at bat. It might have been the changeup. It was the changeup. He throws a hard changeup, too. You know what? If And I know everybody has an opinion about how many miles per hour off the fastball the change should be. But I've caught some guys who had just a few miles an hour off, but they had great impact with the pitch because they threw so hard through the ball, just trusted a, a grip. And so I, I'm, I'm never quick to say, hey, here's how many miles per hour you need to take off. But uh, it, it's all about how you sell that change up with the arm speed. Ground ball. Hit fairly sharply. Kicked by Carter. And now throws late. Or did they get him? They do. So perseverance by Carter results in an out. As well as uh, Lance McCullers getting to the bag. 3-1 on the play. And maybe the Tigers will take another look at a review right here. Astros heading toward the dugout. Yeah, we'll hang around for a moment as Brad Osmus tries to determine what gets done. Well, yeah. So that's going to record, be recorded as the out. And just three hitters come to the plate in the second. We're still scoreless. Yep. A little after the 4 o'clock hour as the Astros and Tigers get at it. Marwin Gonzalez leads off in the third, followed by Jake Marisnik and Jose Altuve. Jonathan VR and Chris Carter with hits. One of those days where I think you have to feel like you need to get greedy a little bit. You've got a soft-tossing left-hander on the hill. Time to go open up the barrage a bit. And there's a line shot. Base hit by Marwin. And likely extra bases. He'll dig for second. As Cespedes now will pick it up finally and get it back in. It's a leadoff double by Marwin Gonzalez. I think Marwin feels the same way you do. 
That pitch is right down the middle, and that's what you're supposed to do with it. Turn on it. You know, we've talked about the Astros being believers at the way they got off to the quarter pole, first place, playing so well. And if you're believers, I think you have to believe all the way through, whether you're a pitcher or somebody that swings the bat. I think you've got to believe that you take advantage of opportunities. Jake Marisnik at the plate, 0 for his last five. And with the way runs have been tough to get, what do you think? Probably a, a move him up time? I'm not too sure. Or just go let him swing away against a guy like Lobstein. Go to Hacken. Grab ball on the right side. So you take your best shot at the base hit, put it on the right side, and move the runner up. That's out number one. Marwin Gonzalez now at third. I mean, there's ways to do it, obviously, with the bump, but I think right there you kind of put it in Jake Marisnik's hands. He's been swinging a good bat all year long. Give him a chance to swing it, maybe drive him in, but you can see he had the right mentality up there trying to hit that ball the other way. I probably misrepresented my statement. Move him up time. I was just yeah. thinking about, you know, trying to hit the ball you to the right to. side or whatever the case may be. On a daily basis, if you play the team game, you're going to be highly successful. Yeah. So one out for Altuve. Normally a great opportunity for the Astros. Right now, Jose is not hot, and that's to say the least. Oh, for his last eight. Infield draws in. Jose hits it in the air center field. Plenty deep enough. Anthony Ghost has a great arm, but he's not going to use it here. Tagging and scoring, just jogging in is Marwin Gonzalez. And the Astros take a 1-0 lead on a sack fly by Jose Altuve. Well, the winning percentage when the Astros score first is extremely high, even though they lost that game last night scoring first. But I think getting on the board early against Lobstein is a good idea for these Houston Astros. Give Lance McCullers, the rookie pitcher, maybe a little bit of a cushion. Try and add to this, but I think it's important playing that team inning right there. Leadoff double. Marisnik moves him over. Sack fly. You're on the board. Altuve now with 25 RBIs. Two-hitter Jonathan VR stands in. VR had a base hit. Shooting one into left field in the first inning. Effective changeup from a guy that doesn't throw all that hard. How about two unselfish ABs for Marisnik and yeah. Altuve? Yeah. Yeah, Jake Marisnik, I, I think, is the guy that you want to make sure and give the high fives to in the dugout. Well, if you can get a half of a sack in football, you should be able to get half an RBI. It's a pretty good point. Why not? It's the 12th sacrifice fly for the Astros this year. Second by Jose Altuve. Slider. And got him. McCann shows that he caught the ball. That'll do it. The Astros pick up the first run of the ball game and lead it one zip. Greenberg, four-time All-Star with the Tigers and two-time American League MVP who drove in 150 runs or more three different times in his career. 
including 184 in 1937, by the way. Hank hit 331 career homers despite losing four seasons in the prime of his career while serving in his country, served for his country in World War II. So he missed a total of five seasons, including that one with the broken wrist, and still put up almost 1,300 RBIs. 184? I only have gotten 184 hits in a season. Well, I don't even have to think about that. Jeez. Eight hitter, James McCann leads it off. Pops it up on the right side. Chris Carter drifts. And now Altuve in fair territory makes the catch. Out number one here in the third inning. Greenberg with a statue amongst the greats of Tiger lore. It's a pretty good hitting position up there. There you go. Greenberg. That's that, getting that power position with that power L right there. That's how you create the pop. Is that Jeff Bagwell or is that Hank Greenberg? Ooh. Nine hitter Jose Iglesias at the plate, but he's not a nine hitter. Hitting 322. This guy is putting it together. Turned a great double play earlier in this game, too. Ground ball, foul outside the bag at third. Yeah, this young shortstop looks like he might be destined to play for a long time at that position here with the Tigers. Has just one hit in the series. He's one for five and has scored a run. Slider tapped first base side. Perfect bunt. McCullers can't get it done. So Iglesias with some very good speed beats it out and now is hobbling. And we'll see how this works out. It'll be interesting to see how all these guys end up. Lance McCullers coming towards the line, loses his footing, does a pretty good job of getting that ball down to Chris Carter, but Chris Carter with that foot on the bag Iglesias somehow made contact with him. Looks like they may have collided knees. Looks like Iglesias reaches for that area just above his left knee. Well, I guess considering the size of Chris Carter, it would be a knee to quad injury in that matchup. And yeah, look at that size differential there. Glacius has himself a base hit. He's part of that very present running game now for the Tigers. Got the training staff looking at Lance McCullers also. Throwing a couple pitches to see where he's at. He's only 21 years old. He should be fine. Watch as he tries to make this throw. It just kind of comes about, out like a uh, changeup. Could you argue or could you replay if he was running on the inside of the uh, baseline there? <laughs> Did he impact the play in doing so? Oh, well, yeah, you know. Clearly, he's inside the baseline. Yeah, Carter got drilled, didn't yeah, he? that could have been ugly on both sides. I think I've probably seen one player on each side come out of the ball game at the same time, but never three players total, and that ooh, there was potential for that. Now, do the Tigers have any running game? We'll see with a Iglesias aboard. One out here in the third inning. Anthony Ghost is the leadoff man. And 0 for 1 on the day. Fly to left field. McCullers really just kind of writing his own story right now. We'll find out also how he is in terms of running games. It's a ball and a strike on Ghost, hitting 328. That's what I'm talking about right there. If you can see that from Lance McCullers a little more often with that changeup, you know, 1-0 count for a strike. That'll plant the seed in some hitters. Minds on what to face. What do you do when you got to look for either 95 or the changeup, and you can see a little bit of a buckle job there by Ghost. 
Nice wrinkle to get ahead. So two off-speed pitches gets Lance McCullers back in this count, and he has that 95 in the tank. Could elevate right here, maybe try and blow on pass goes. Mentioned yesterday that Anthony Ghost was very briefly a Houston Astro, just on paper. Well, the Tigers have got some numbers in this lineup in terms of batting averages. Iglesias with that hit at 328. Here's a drive and deep to center field. Mareznik looking up, and this is off the wall at 420. Here comes Iglesias to the plate. The Tigers have tied it at one. RBI double Anthony Ghost. And that was a bolt. Double number nine for Ghost. He's been swinging a hot bat in this series. Big hits. Seen some defense. We've seen some stolen bases. Now he drives this one to the deepest part of the ballpark. Almost gets it out of here. Fastball center cut. And when a guy's throwing 95, if you're quick to the ball and get the barrel on it like Ghost just did, it's going to fly. So long hang time up there. You look at that center field. And we've talked about it in the series. But 420 and then the wall going straight across. Just a huge ballpark. Anthony Ghost has been thought of for a few years as a guy who runs really well and throws well, but not with that kind of power, but that's big time pop. Looked like Kinsler was trying to fire one to right field. Kinsler caught looking in the first inning. Two strikeouts have been picked up by Lance McCullers. Looks like McCullers certainly has his head together in terms of picking up goes, changing his delivery time. But if you let Ghost get too much of a lead, he's going to go. Two and one the count. Ghost has, has seven stolen bases, but he's been caught three times. Line shot center field hanging up. Marisnik makes the catch. Follow the Astros all season with MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. At bat is up to the moment at any moment with in game highlights, live look ins, replay reviews, radio broadcasts, stat casts, and more. Get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablet. Two outs now, but Miguel Cabrera stands in, and they're going to put him on. And McCullers throws the first wide one to the backstop. So that moves Ghost into third base. And now do you continue with the notion of walking Cabrera? That one got away. Well, you hope something like that doesn't lead to one of the the thing, the, the mental issue in throwing the baseball. They will stay with the plan. Put Cabrera on. He's one for one on the day. And a guy that even when he's not hot with the bat, is always a threat. But he's hot on top of it, and he draws the walk. Runners at the corners now for J.D. Martinez. Just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one to look forward to Miller time later in the game. Brought to you by Miller Lite. It's the eighth time this year Cabrera has been passed intentionally. And that leads the league. But I guess that would be an easy assumption. J.D. Martinez struck out swinging to end the first inning. Slider tapped back toward the mound. And making the play McCullers 
Throws a bit high. Carter makes the handling end of it, and that'll do it for the Tigers in the third inning. They tie the ball game at one on a key double by Anthony Ghost. And our Geico quote of the day is Alfredo Simon talking about pitching here at Comerica Park. He said, it's a park for pitchers. When I get behind in the count here, I can throw fastballs. It's a big park, and hitters just hit fly balls. It's not easy to hit home runs here. And it is a very big park. I'm out here by the statues where I have a great view of the left field, especially the bullpens, which weren't always here, guys. Uh, this the outfield fence here in the left field power alley was about 395 where the seats begin. Uh, they eventually moved those, the fence in, putting the bullpens in the space, in the open space there. It's now around 370, uh, helping out hitters a little bit, I guess you could say. But we did see Preston Tucker hit one over here for his first major league home run. What do you guys think about this park? I think it's a beautiful ballpark. I don't know if I would want to try to make my living here as a hitter. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you on that. Yeah. Blummer mentioned that Right field, straight away to right field is, is not too bad. If you, if you can earn your living over there, you probably do pretty well. Otherwise, good luck. Well, just crazy to me that they signed a big slugger like Juan Gonzalez back in the day to come here and try and hit bombs, and then they built this ballpark where it's 395 in a power alley. That's, uh, that's not too conducive to creating home runs and runs. In fact, when you watch games where now the bullpen area is in left and left center field, our home run area that area used to be nothing but a fly ball yeah George Springer hits it in the air right center field loping over Anthony Ghost. he'll make the catch out number one here in the fourth you got a ballpark bio on Comerica Park or Tiger Stadium whatever you want to call it it's a nice big ballpark right in downtown Detroit great view from our vantage point you see that 420 in center field, that's a long way to go. But the 370 and 365 in the power alleys is what you're talking about. And you see the comparison between Minute Maid Park. Obviously, the left field's quite a bit shorter in Houston, but that right field's still playing pretty similar. Towles Hill out there in center field actually extends past that 420 mark here in Comerica. I wish they would mark the, the two extreme ends of that center field wall here. I would assume those are actually a little bit more than 420 from home plate. Since that wall runs straight across, it's got to be getting further away from home plate. So this could be as much in the two gaps a little bit. I don't know if it's quite to the gaps, but it's almost as if Jim Deshays designed this ballpark. You think? Pop up on the infield, Iglesias. Shades his eyes with the glove and makes a catch. Two outs. Why Jim Deshays? I, um, I don't know. Just just any kind of pitcher. Go ahead and. I just feel like throwing Jim's name out there. Get some massive fly balls and 
let my speedy guys haul him in. Yeah, just throw that belt high fastball and say, go for it, guys. Well, the thing is, with Jim Deshaies, guys couldn't get to that belt high fastball. Just foul it back, swing and miss. Maybe, you know what? Jose Lima. Oh, he could give yeah. up some home runs at Minute Maid Park. He was pretty upset when he pitched in there, but he had yeah. some good years at the Astrodome. That first year at at what is now Minute Maid Park uh, was not a, f a friendly year for Jose Lima. After having some big seasons in uh, the Astrodome. In fact, that first year, the Astros' bats went wild in there. It looked like it was going to turn into an absolute haven for the offensive side of the game, but it's really balanced out in recent years. I'm sure there's been adjustments in that front office trying to say we need more guys to throw sinker balls, sinker balls, pitch, pitching down in the zone. But yeah, that first year, whoo. Preston Tucker at the plate has a 2 1 count. The, the one big adjustment that was made physically on the field was originally the, the lower, where the bullpens are in left center field, that lower portion of the padding mm -hmm. was the home run line right there. Oh, wow. So that was raised uh, in, I believe, year two. Good move. Been a little more exciting for outfielders trying to play the carom, too. Absolutely. Now, Atlanta. They called that place the launching pad, correct? The old ballpark, which was right across the street. Was it a launching pad? Well, I don't know that it was, was really a launching pad. You know, Atlanta is a city of elevation a bit, more than people think. Yeah. It's not quite a mile high, but it's uh, it's up in that neighborhood, I think 3,000-some-odd feet. Yeah, I was always curious because going through there with the humidity and as hot as it could get out there sometimes, I... Couldn't imagine a place out there being a launching pad. Preston Tucker coaxes the walk here with two outs. He's aboard for Chris Carter. The, the really weird thing, uh, you brought up that ballpark right across the street in the parking lot of what now is Turner Field. I believe that's what they call it, right? Yep. And Turner Field is known as an absolute pitcher's ballpark, is yeah, it it's not? Yeah, a big ballpark. you got to drive the ball to get out of there. So Tucker aboard, and Chris Carter, who is one for one, will stand in. Carter lined a two-out single into left field in the second inning. I'd like to see him try and launch one out where Julia was. That would be where the, the pizza vendor is, right? Yeah, she could pick up the baseball and bring us a pizza. There you go. This place is coming pretty cl close to packed in right now. It is. In fact, look at all the people standing above that, that brick wall with the names of some of the greats here and the numbers. People hanging out. So I have a feeling this is going to be a sellout here this afternoon. People like 4 o'clock starts in Detroit. Or are people catching on to the Houston Astros and coming out to see them? Who wouldn't want to come out and see these two quality ball clubs going at it? Beautiful day in Detroit. You know, for some of the folks getting a chance to see Lance McCullers, they may be looking at a guy who turns out to be a pretty darn good pitcher in the major leagues. Carter takes a strike. It's three and one. See if Tucker has any inclination to run. The answer is no. And Carter draws the walk. Back-to-back -back free passes. Two runners aboard for Jason Castro. And that's going to bring out the pitching coach. Jeff Jones will take the slow walk out to the mound. Already out there is the catcher McCann. So they'll have their visit. 1-1 one, one ball game here in the fourth inning. Probably questioning the command of Lobstein right now. Had a left-handed hitter up there with two outs. Walks him. Then you walk a guy like Chris Carter. Kind of makes you wonder if you can try and dial the kid back and get him back on those edges of the plate. That left-hand hitter you mentioned, Preston Tucker, has the only Astros home run of the series. Yeah, the big bad boys around Major League Baseball, the Astros, have been quiet with the long ball in the series. One long ball. It was a pinch hit job by Tucker and tied the game with one out in the ninth inning. That was game one of the series.
With their 62 home runs, the Astros continue to lead the American League. We mentioned the Tigers have gone by the Astros in the stolen base department. And there's that shift. Castellanos, the third baseman, playing in shallow right. You see him call timeout. It's a long run over there. He said, please hold. I'm going to move into right field. <laughs> Pickoff play at second, and Tucker just does get back in. Is that going to be the new thing now that every time there's a close play, the player is going to point towards the dugout? It's going to get a little annoying for well, me. To me, I, he, no. may, he may have a case, but it just seems like around the league. I'm wondering if the perception by Kinsler was that the foot of Preston Tucker initially didn't get to the bag. I couldn't quite tell there. Does Brad Osmus pull the trigger here? You know, if you thought you could get that call on a re replay, uh, be a big one to get. A couple of runners aboard. 1-1 one, one game in the fourth. Save some pitches on your pitch count. 1-0 the count on Castro. Jason hitting 227. How about Preston Tucker? If you're a rookie and you're on the base pads and you've got a salty veteran guy like Ian Kinsler, you better be watching out. Mm -hmm. These guys will try and pick on you when you're feeling pretty good about yourself out there at second base in the big leagues. Castro starts the bat, holds it back. Every time I see that play, I think of you know, not just years ago, decades ago, Bobby Gritch with the oh, Angels man. and with Baltimore. He would turn into a catcher and block you off the bag. So if you didn't get back in plenty early, you were in for a battle to get to the bag. Probably break a couple fingers if you're diving back in there. Castro takes a strike. And now a throw down from McCann. Good grief. They are after Preston Tucker. Trying to manufacture outs. Two and one the count. Quite ideal for a ball game here this afternoon. But those shadows are going to start creeping out onto the field of play. It's going to get tough for the hitters quite soon. Castro now with a 2-2 count. Yeah, that was my initial thought when I saw the 4 o'clock start on the schedule is usually teams don't want to do that. I know it's not all about the ball players sometimes. It's about getting these fans in the seats. And like you said, a 4 o'clock start is probably pretty appealing this time of year in Detroit. But as we head into the middle section of this game. You can see the light standard starting to creep out on that first base side. But when it gets down to crunch time, there's going to be some heavy duty shadows out there. And now three and two. So the runners will be on the move. Tucker at second. Carter from first. The Astros just four hits in yesterday's game. The team batting average last in the American League at 228. All right. Come on. So I'll, I'll, say, it, I'll say it again. Come on, Kyle. I, I think if you're going to make that move, you should have to have an infielder at the bag to make it, make it valid. Otherwise, all you're doing is trying to catch runners getting a jump. Yeah, that was... That was all, it might as well just have been a step off. Runners go 3-2 almost drills Castro so the bases are loaded three consecutive walks with two outs Tucker Carter and Castro and now they're all juiced up for Marwin Gonzalez Academy Sports and Outdoors is offering free youth baseball and softball camps this summer at the Astros Urban Youth Academy these week long camps are for kids ages 7 through 17 and begin June 8th visit Astros.com slash UYA to sign up today. A pretty good deal right there. Ian Kinsler went out to the mound briefly. Three consecutive walks. Lobstein had not walked yeah. a man. Well, raised some red flags in that Detroit dugout. 
So Marwin, who lined a double down the left field side in the third inning and scored the only run for Houston, stands in a big opportunity. Sharply hit on the ground, but to shortstop, Iglesias on to Kinsler for the force. And that does it. The Astros strand three with the three walks. After three and a half, a 1-1 game. We've been here in Detroit for a while, but we've got one more tomorrow, Sunday, before taking off to Baltimore for a big three-game set. Be that Memorial Monday day game. Day off on Thursday as the team gets back into Houston before starting a weekend series with the Chicago White Sox and then bring on the Birds again. Four-game set in the middle of the week right there, Monday through Thursday. Before heading back out on the road, heading north into Canada. Some Toronto Blue Jays and then back in Chicago for more White Sox. It's amazing how the schedule is set up this year with some of these repeats so quickly back to back series against some of these teams. Did you say heading north? Well, Toronto is north, but in order to get to Canada, you from, showed from me Detroit. From Detroit, you have to go south. That's correct. Which is odd. Way to go. Yeah. Well, I couldn't have done it without you. Yeah, you have to take a look at a map to see why that is, but a uh, little bit of an oddity here in this area. Jeff Blum will never forget that point, though. Bottom of the fourth inning, a 1-1 tie. Ioannis Cespedes at the plate. 0 for 1 on the day. Wow. What a rip. And leave your bat behind. If you are, this might be one of those. You get an off-speed pitch, you take a nice big hack at it. And you had to have done it. You've played long enough where you hyperextend that lead elbow a little bit. Yep. Yeah. It does not feel good at all. Think that's what happened for him there? I'm assuming he kind of lose a little bit of feeling in that hand, but he gets to do it again. Lost a little feeling in handling that slider as well, and down on strikes. Third strikeout picked up by Lance McCullers, out number one here in the fourth inning. Nasty slider. Goes that thing pretty hard. Good late break on it. Good hitter like Cespedes swinging through it. Was that, uh, was that a description or an angry comment? Nasty slider. Nasty. A little bit of both. I kind of felt for Cespedes right there. See what McCullers does with that curveball and changeup. We've actually seen some good changeups in this game. But a good mix when he's throwing them for strikes. Good whiff percentage on it. I am really encouraged seeing the stuff of Lance McCullers. And I think with each start, and you're almost seeing it with each inning where he can really start locating it a lot better but I think with each start Lance might be one of those guys that develops a lot better command a little more comfortability here in the big leagues he's in the fourth inning 94 miles an hour with that heater shift on for Castellanos they ask for the appeal and they get the call well I think that first game he pitched I mean you're a 21 year old rookie pitching in your 
home ballpark. You got mom and dad at the ballpark, <laughs> and I, I think his sister. And yeah, you, I mean, you're, you're trying to perform and prove you belong there. You're going to be, you, you know, that release point might be a little scattered every now and then. But I think with the more starts he gets, and we're seeing it here already in his second start, much more efficient with his pitches. Does it make it easier or tougher that dad was a major league pitcher? I would imagine it's got to be a little bit tougher. Yeah. Trying to measure up the pops. Yeah. yeah. Those had to be with Lance McCullers all of his life. Another breaking ball, another strikeout. That's four now for McCullers. Two outs here in the fourth inning. And the young right-hander looking really good. Another hammer. Battled back in this count. But what a treat to have that pitch in your back pocket when you can go for a strikeout. Along with that mid-90s heater. Well, that's what makes that pitch that much better is when the yep. hitter has that in the back of his mind. Is this, this guy's got a fastball that can beat me with two strikes. Boy, that fastball, 96. That thing was alive right there. Tyler Collins, 0 for 1, grounded out to Carter. It was not a routine-looking play, but it was an out when it was all said and done. Carter had the grounder eat him up a little Ooh. bit. It's a good pitch. Sure looked like a good pitch. You know, McCullers has a nice pacing to his, his uh, rhythm out there on the mound as well. He does. I'd be ready to attack if I had his stuff, too. Wish I could say the same for Lobstein in the way things have been. Certainly in the last inning he pitched. Oof. And now three and one the count. Castro gets a new baseball for McCullers. But I think that might have been to slow Lance down a little bit. You do like the pace, but you don't want him to rush up there and start rushing that ball towards home. That's when you start losing your release point. This young man doesn't appear to be phased by the, the major league lights and everything that comes along. Fly ball center field should be a one, two, three, fourth inning for Lance McCullers. Beriznik makes the catch. And so we played four innings and a 1-1 tie. West Airlines. Book your low fare right now at southwest.com. And by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit us at geico.com or call 1-800-947-AUTO. Lovely sight you see Ford Field for the Detroit Lions right across the street. I think these places are connected. Through some tunnels underneath there. There, it's that close. It's how we get to the ballpark from the Good point. where the bus is parked. Yeah. Jake Marisnik leads off in the fifth inning and takes the strike. Kyle Lobstein walked three consecutive hitters with two outs in the fourth inning. 
but then able to get Marwin Gonzalez to hit into a fielder's choice. Broken bat. The barrel end goes flying by the mound as Iglesias makes the play out number one. Yeah, typically you see guys get their bats broken that bad. It's usually from a guy throwing as hard as Lance McCullers because you're yeah. getting jammed, but sometimes you get it off the end of the bat, it snaps in the same way. Jose Altuve has not gotten hot here this afternoon, but he has driven in the only run for the Astros that came on a sack fly in the third inning. Jose 0 for 1 overall, and now with 25 RBIs. And he has dipped below 300. Is that enough to get him angry? Shows bunt and takes a ball. He's below the Altuve line. <laughs> what what is that? 330? <laughs> line shot right center field coming on Ghost and makes the play. Not even the baseball gods are watching out for Jose Altuve letting that ball drop. Yeah, for the moment. The base hit landscape is barren. Two outs for Jonathan VR. VR has singled and struck out. A run on three hits for each club. The Tigers, or rather the Astros, have an error on the afternoon. Lopstein. Boy, a wide range of stuff from the mound today. Lopstein, mid 80s with the fastball. On the other hand, Lance McCullers, mid 90s. This hot shot by Castellano. Second time VR has picked up that type of base hit today. VR almost heads for second base as Cespedes finally gets it back in. Two out single brings up George Springer. Join the Astros at Minute Maid Park on Saturday, May 30th, as they take on the White Sox. 10,000 fans will receive a George Springer replica jersey presented by Houston Methodist. For more information, visit Astros.com or call 1-877-9-ASTROS. Springer is 0 for 2 on the day. His first at bat resulted in a double play back in the first inning. Heck of a play by Ian Kinsler to get it started. That back of the bag at second base and then a really gifted turn by Iglesias to finish it off. Good time for some two out lightning. Where is that big swing for this club? It's only been a couple of days, but feels oh, like but it's been longer. Well, would say the, at the rate they hit home runs, it feels like it's been a while. And now picked off as VR and they've got him one three. Well, what is that? One three four. Five, four. One, three, four is is the ruling. So a caught stealing. That does it for Houston.
Lance is powered by Kubota as we take a look at Colin McHugh last night. He took the loss despite a quality start for him. Three earned runs over seven innings of work. And all by the way of uh, J.D. Martinez with a big swing in the third to put the Tigers ahead 3-2 to two at that point. We chatted with Colin after the game. Not happy at all, guys, with the way he threw the ball. Uh, one, another one of those starts where we saw him battle through seven, uh, really trying to help his or give his team a chance to, to stay in it and win. And he really did, uh, just not happy with, with his command and the way he was throwing the ball yesterday. Thanks, Julia. Inside into Colin McHugh. You, you meet the guy and you probably would think... Uh, Maybe a little timid. I don't know what the word to choose would be, but it seems to me like he's picking up some of Dallas Keuchel's mentality of looking for close to perfection at all times, and that could only be a good thing. I agree. Well, maybe the two guys are feeding off each other. I think there is some friendly competition in that rotation right now between those two guys. 2-2 two -two the count. We're looking at some great stuff from Lance McCullers in the fifth inning. That fastball at 94. He hit 96 in the fourth inning. Sliders tap foul. You see where Will Smith has been suspended for eight games? Unreal. I, guess, I, I mean, I understand that they're going by the book, and that's what the typical suspension time for those. I think Michael Pineda got something similar to that. But, yeah, that seems uh, excessive for... Oh. Oh, I thought that had come out of Hollywood. I'm sorry. That's out of the Milwaukee Brewers camp. Yeah. He got suspended eight movies. <laughs> he got suspended and had to watch eight of his movies. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that should have been called a strike. Let's go, guys. That high strike zone is, is hard to get consistent on. Line shot after the would-be third strike, and it gets by George Springer and down the right field side. James McCann, the big man with the bat here for the Tigers. Leadoff double in the fifth inning. It'll bring up Jose Iglesias. Ball kind of skipped on George a little bit. Saw that happen to Rajay Davis earlier in the series. Fastball that McCann's able to get on top of, and he's been killing the Astros in this series. Big leadoff double. That so ball really did scoot on George. Take off, huh? Yeah. Yeah, Will Smith, pitcher for the Milwaukee Brewers, sunscreen and rosin combination. And that seems to be the standard working procedure yeah. for most pitchers around the league. He was just being too blatant about it. So no need to get your Will Smith movies out right now. False alert. Nobody out. Tigers trying to jump on top here in the fifth inning as Iglesias takes a strike. It just feels like so often you see a pitch that could have, should have been called a strike, would have polished off a hitter, and then when it's not called a strike, the next pitch thrown winds up as a hit. Happens all the time, doesn't it? These Detroit Tigers have scheduled a little simulated game for Justin Verlander. You may remember him. Wouldn't that be a blast just to stand in on? 0-2 oh, the count. I remember doing that for Nolan Ryan way back in the day. We had, I believe we were in Cincinnati, and Nolan was going to throw a simulated job, and you, you, and you were picked out to, to go <laughs> hit in that game. That was fun. Gee, thanks. Fly ball down the right side. That slices foul. And a simulated game is usually thrown by a pitcher who's on the disabled list, and they'll just, before batting practice, put up the L screen, put the pitcher on the mound. Batting cage will be up, and then he'll face a couple guys that are on that big league roster. Yep. And throw about, what, about 30, 50 pitches? I want to say this was about midday, a kind of a noon yeah. it kind is, of a deal. Early. Yeah. And needless to say, Nolan's stuff was pretty good that day. Well, that's the thing is the pitcher's going 100%, and the hitters aren't. Grab ball right side, and McCullers fails to get to the bag. It's an infield single for Iglesias. Not sure if he lost track of the ball, kind of nubbed off the end of the bat. Yeah, but he's, got to, he's watching where it's going, but just decided to buy a ticket instead of become part of the play. It 
self inflicted wound. Absolutely. Runners at the corners. Nobody out. And this is going to take some masterful work to get out of this inning without the Tigers moving ahead in this game. Brent Strom is going to go to the mound. Top of the order now. So they've got Ghost, Kinsler, Cabrera, and on and on in this very good lineup for the Tigers coming up. This could be the conversation where Brent Strom comes out and goes, son, you put yourself in this situation, but you have the stuff to get out of it. Yeah, that's, you know, it takes a, a tough guy to be able to receive that message in the, uh, in the vein that it's intended. Step up time. It's a tough part of the order to do it to. Last time he faced Ghost, he put one about 419 feet away from home plate. That was a double in the third inning off the center field wall straight away. And that drove in the only run for the Tigers today, plating Jose Iglesias. All the way from first base, by the way. Iglesias leads. And showing Bunt Ghost takes the slider for the strike. But that for a first pitch strike. You know, I'm calling it a slider. I'm trying to recall. I believe McCullers may call it a breaking ball. And he just varies just it. Just a blanket. Yeah. Dallas Keuchel type off speed pitch. Yes. Where you get a couple of different versions. Well, we've seen the hard one he yep. goes to for a strikeout. Like that. Ooh, that was a good pitch. Boy, that is a good looking slider, I, I will call it. Even though I should call it breaking ball. Boy, there's, cool. there's a strike. Hunter Wendelstead behind the plate. Veteran has been there a long, long time. And a ground ball to Altuve. They'll try to get two and they won't get a thing. Run scores. Everybody's safe. It'll be a fielder's choice in an E4. You cannot assume the double play. And an RBI for Anthony Ghost. But the most important thing is there are still no outs and the Tigers lead 2-1. to one. Speed puts pressure on defense, and this is a big situation. First and third, nobody out. Great change up from McCullers to get that ground ball. But realizing who's at home plate, Altuve maybe tried to rush this play a little bit. Gave that feed towards the inside of the diamond. Usually shortstops are going to that outside part of the diamond to avoid the base runner. So Marwin Gonzalez anticipating that ball on the outside of the diamond, unable to adjust back to the inside. This inning getting out of control for the Houston Astros. You know, Brad Osmussen, the trainer for the Tigers, going out to second base. I thought in watching Iglesias yeah. go down the first base line that he was still hobbling. I agree. Iglesias bumped legs, knees, something with Chris Carter earlier in the ball game, And, yeah, it looks like he's, he's hurting a bit. And I think Brad has decided that's enough. He's not going to hurt his young star shortstop. Collided with Chris Carter while running down to first base, and that's a that's not the kind of matchup you want to see. Iglesias versus Carter, Carter won. So Iglesias, or make that. Yes, that is Iglesias at second base. Anthony Ghost is the runner at first base. Let's take a look back at that first inning. Pitch by pitch brought to you by your local steel dealer. Kinsler's first look at Lance McCuller saw a heater on the inside corner, called for a strike. Fouled off that breaking ball. Good job elevating that fastball, and then came back with an even better fastball down that zone to put Kinsler away. Right now would be a good time for that to happen again. Hernan Perez is the pinch runner now at second base. So he takes over for Jose Iglesias. Two on Tigers. We're in the fifth inning. Ian Kinsler at the plate. That looks similar to the pitch that we just showed Kinsler striking out yeah. on. This is this is just not fair what's going on for Lance McCullers. And another strike. Two and all the count. Wonder if the shadows are affecting Hunter Wendelstead. 
I understand the rookies are going to be squeezed, but at the same time, that was the same level right there as the first pitch we saw. See that number one, number three right next to it. Two and one the count. Slider grounded to third. He'll step on the oh, back. Do it. Get another at second. Do it. And the triple play. The Astros turn a five unassisted 4-3 triple play to get out of the fifth inning as the Tigers get just one run. And how about that for the play that's needed? Jonathan VR gets it started. Triple play since 2004, August that year. Ian Kinsler gets this one started and watch Jonathan VR make the right reaction. Yeah, pardon me for being a little bit excited right here, but this was amazing. I maybe played about a thousand more games at third base and never had the opportunity to do what Jonathan VR did right here. Heads up play, stepping on the bag, great feed, great turn. Oh, that was awesome. Man, that's good stuff and very timely for Lance McCullers, who wasn't helped otherwise in that inning. That was awesome. August 19th of 04, the last triple play turned by the Astros. So you can see, I mean, just by the numbers alone, it doesn't happen often. Ground ball to short. George Springer retired. He's 0 for 3 on the day and out number 1. Just got a note that said the last time the Tigers hit into a triple play was May 20th of 2009 against Texas. Guess who was involved in that triple play? I know who it was, so I'll let you go ahead and spill the beans. Ian Kinsler. Yeah, man. You know, you don't expect it on a guy like Kinsler because he runs so well. True. Bad placement on that ground ball. So Lance McCullers gets his name in the books for the Astros with now the most recent triple play turned. Are you kidding me with the timing of that, too? Wow. Two runners on, wow. nobody out. The inning was getting away from them. And again, an inning that, <laughs> you know, from what we're looking at with the strike box, was not helping Lance McCullers at all. Maintained his composure out there, got the ground ball, and good things happened. Kevin Gaddis 0 for 2 on the day. And Lance McCullers, he just looks cool and calm like he's done this all of his life. Now two and one. Kyle Lobstein has walked three on the day, and they came back to back to back. Tucker, Carter, and Castro in the fourth inning. The Astros could not take advantage. The only Houston run coming in the third. 
Marwin Gonzalez had led off with a double and out later. After moving him up, Jake Marisnik did the move up job on a ground out. Jose Altuve had a sack fly. Only nine hits on the afternoon. Four picked up by Houston and five by the Tigers. That triple play turn by the Astros in August of 04 was against the Phillies. Pop fly foul territory. Cabrera with the play. And two outs in the sixth. And now Preston Tucker will stand in. Tucker, 0 for 1 on the day. Grounded out. That into the teeth of the shift with the third baseman. Castellanos in shallow right field. He got him, so it was a 5-3 play and has drawn a walk. Mr. Tucker may be taking a shot to not only tie the ball game, but maybe hit one out of Tiger Stadium. That'd be pretty cool. They'd take a pretty good shot, huh? Just, just go Giancarlo Stanton all over this thing. Took it out of Dodger Stadium last week. It would take me three clubs to get out of this place. Fungo from behind second base is what I'm thinking for me. It's aggressive, Ash. Of course, if you're talking out of right field, out of this ballpark, I may need more than what I just uh, begged for. Are you going to stand on the top of the foul pole and shoot one out that way? Yeah. Line shot, base hit. Preston Tucker at it again. Very solidly hit. Two out single. So Preston is one for two, and it brings up Chris Carter. And the Astros are so in need of a big swing. Well, we just got ex some excitement from a triple play as you look at Preston Tucker's sweet swing, staying on that off-speed pitch and just nice, easy line drive out there in center field. But even some defensive plays can change the momentum a little bit. Stymie a rally with a triple play. Come back with a home run. Line shot dropping for a hit. Carter has his first hit. Make that second hit of the day. And now the Astros have runners at first and second with two outs for Jason Castro. Chris Carter's first at bat, base hit. Next at bat, walk. This at bat, base hit. That's what we like to call a streak, Ash. Well, it's a perfect day for Chris Carter. Off the end of the bat. Yeah. They have a tendency to see that with guys that don't throw very hard. Maybe someday as the Tigers now send their pitching coach Jeff Jones out to the mound. The entire infield coming together there at the hill. And as they do that, uh, someday maybe there's the trivia question that says, who was the first baseman when the Astros turned their last triple play and it was turned with Lance McCullers on the hill? Chris Carter would be the name. who got it started Jonathan VR Luis Valbuena sitting right next to him thinking look at him he's mad how he's come like, I didn't get that chance ball. exactly this was the last triple play against the Phillies 04 is that Morgan Jeff Lomsberg oh Jeff that's Kent. Morgan to Mike Lamb that was like the bases were juiced right there that is Morgan at third, yeah. Let's go on, Mo. That's good stuff. That is good stuff. Nice job, guys. Jason Castro now with a chance. And backs away, takes it inside. Pittsburgh Pirates are pummeling away on Matt Harvey of the Mets today. No. 7 1 lead over the Metsies in the sixth. I think that the. Yeah, sixth. Line shot through the vacated left side. And we are tied at two as the throw comes in offline and now gets on by McCann. Easy chance for Carter to move up. Jason Castro remains at first base. But a big RBI hit for Jason Castro. And right back even with the Tigers at two.
not sure what the reports say in Detroit, but we've watched a lot of Jason Castro's at bats, and he does a good job of going the other way. And I think with the left-handed pitcher up there, even more so because he does such a good job of keeping that front shoulder closed. Brad Osmus comes out to the mound, and that's going to do it for Lobstein. Well, we'll be right back in a 2-2 tie. New to, new to Houston and looking to get to know the city better? With our Welcome to Houston package, we invite you to tour Minute Maid Park and enjoy an Astros game on Saturday, May 30th. For tickets, visit Astros.com slash Welcome to Houston or call 1-877-9-ASTROS. Now Jonathan Villar enjoying the celebrity status as he starts the triple play. And now Al Albuquerque comes in from that Tiger bullpen. 17th appearance features fastball and a slider. Finds the inside corner. Marwin Gonzalez at the plate. Chris Carter is down at third base. Jason Castro at first. The error charged to the left fielder Cespedes as that ball came into the infield. So the Astros have two errors on the day. The Tigers now with their first. Shadows start to creep out across the field. I would think at this point, as you look at one of the shadows casting out across the mound, and then right at home plate, another shadow, especially on the right hand hitters, it's going to start getting really tough. Doesn't look like any fun at all. 0-2 oh, the count. Marwin is one for two on the day and scored that first Houston run. That back in the third. Line shot. That's a base hit. That'll play to run. Carter touches home plate into third base Castro. Ghost gets it back in, but not before the Astros lead it 3-2. to two. Run will be credited to Lobstein. And second hit for Marwin. Four straight hits in this inning with two outs. Talks about two out lightning, and they're giving it to him right now. Tucker, Carter, Castro, and Marwin. Might not get talked about a lot, but that was great base running by Castro. Going first to third. On a guy that runs, or rather throws really well, Anthony Ghost. Nice job by McCann to keep this in front. Otherwise, the Astros add another run. Nine hitter Jake Marisnik at the plate. There's Jason Castro. That was a big hit. And it looked to us like with that shift on on Jason, he just took a shot through the left side. It really goes the other way quite well for me. 
Marisnik 0 for 2 with a couple of strikeouts. It's 1 and 1. And another nice job. That slider was. Look for a moment destined for the backstop. Albuquerque. Out of the old shortstop factory. San Pedro de Marco Reese from the Dominican Republic. And three and one waiting on deck Jose Altuve. At some point, Altuve is going to get it hot again. He's had a couple of good at bats in this game. That sack fly was a good at bat. Did a good job of taking a pitch down and launching it into center field, but then that next AB hit a line drive to center. And now it's filled three and two. Had to put Castro in motion from first. Tom Corzolani, left-hander warming in the Tiger pen. There goes Castro. And Marisnik gets a piece. He is in swing mode right now. The Astros started the day fourth in the league and run scored. Line drive, but there to make the play and just barely Ian Kinsler. The Marisnik lines out. That does it for Houston, but they pick a pair and jump on top. Our AT&T reromp line is there. He is Lance McCullers Sr. as he works to the Montreal Expos. How about the similar arm action? That long whippy yeah. release. It, it really is. Saves in those eight eight years he pitched. Not bad. Junior on the hill and really looking good. The Astros with two runs in the top of the sixth inning take the 3 2 lead. And now it's 3 4 5 coming up for the Tigers Miguel Cabrera, JD Martinez, and Joanna Cespedes. Miguel, yet to be retired today, has singled and walked. That walk intentional. And a good slider. Gets McCullers in front. Then comes back with the slider, but bounces it. It's a big inning to get through. 
83 pitches for McCullers. How far will A.J. Hinch allow McCullers to go on pitch count today? Getting around that time where you got to start asking that question. Pop fly and destined for the seats on the right side. I believe we saw that McCullers had gone 91 pitches in one of his minor league games this year. Yep, he did, and then he threw 93 against Oakland. Oh, so that he went beyond in that game. So I would think 100 pitches would be within reason. I agree. Get through this sixth inning, maybe get one more frame. Tough part of the order to get through. One and two on Miguel Cabrera. Makes that triple play look even bigger. Boy, oh boy, what a play that turns out to be for the moment. 96. Still got some gas in the tank. Ooh. That gas is not slipping away either. And got him. Turns to the breaking ball, strikes out the big man, Miguel Cabrera, and out number one. You start turning some heads when you've got 96 in the tank this late in the game and throw a breaking ball like that to get a swing and a miss from a perennial triple crown leading type hitter. Ooh, you know, that looks a lot like the breaking balls that we were seeing from the guys in the minor leagues. J.D. Martinez, the <laughs> hey, Jeff Blum is just a mess up here. J.D. Martinez will stand in. Can't put that on me. <laughs> you tried it. Oh, I think I can, <laughs> and I did. It's one and one now on J.D. Oh yeah, you did. <laughs> I think I put it all over you. And now a one-two count. Haven't heard an attendance figure, but sure looks like a packed house today. Well, they've been so economically depressed here in the Detroit area, and yet these fans just love their Tigers. It's not a bad pitch right there by Lance. Not at all. I mean, to the point where I, even if they called it, well, once again, it would seem that Lance McCullers may have delivered a strike and did not get credit for it. And once again, a base hit follows. Good looking breaking ball, but man, you got to start getting some of these calls. I think he's earned it. Take a look at the previous pitch called a ball. This is a fastball up in the zone. See if it catches. That upper outside corner, we've seen worse pitches up there called strike. So J.D. Martinez is one for three on his day. Ioannis Cespedes now steps in. Reached on an error. And then struck out. That came in the fourth inning. Got a pitch by pitch right now. It's going to be brought to you by your local steel dealers. Brought to you by MC Hammer also. You see that breaking ball to start off that A.B. Waste a fastball away. Swing and a miss on that breaking ball, and then just do a better one to put this Bettis away. I would say McCullers has been quite consistent with that slider today, breaking ball, whatever yeah. it is. Well, you had concerns watching his last start about that breaking ball, maybe getting on the side of it a little bit. He was launching them. They were coming up out of his hand oh, wow. at times, yeah. Maybe Dad got a hold of him. Yeah, I wonder. Will Harris now throwing in the Astros pen as the pop up is launched into shallow right field. Near the line comes Springer and makes the catch just before crossing the line. That's two outs. And the pitch count at 93 for McCullers. I got it, I got it, I got it. I think he called the ball boy off that one. Astros in a shift. He did not want to sublux Jose Altuve's jaw on that play. And if there's somebody that can do it, I think 
George is probably the man. He would have done worse. Nick Castellanos at the plate. Again, the shift on. And we've seen a lot of shifting between these two clubs. And at times, it has paid off. At times, hitters have seemingly gone right into the open side of the field. Jose Iglesias left the ball game, and as we surmised, a left knee contusion day-to-day -day for the Tigers. You don't run into Chris Carter and not pay the price. That's our version of the story. No, he's a big man. He's tough to move. Two balls, no strikes on Castellanos. Grounded into a double play and struck out. Can McCullers get through this inning? It appears now that if he does, he's probably done with his day. 95 miles an hour on pitch number 97. You can almost sense that he senses that wants to get this last out, complete this inning. Kind of overthrown on those last three pitches. I'm impressed. I am. And I'm glad to see the adjustment, too. That's what you want to see these kids doing as they come up and progress through their the beginning parts of their career. Pitched well his last time out. A little bit of command issue, but he came back today doing a great job. I'm, I agree. Three and one. Let's see if Castellanos is taking again the DH. Tyler Collins waits on deck. Now you saw it earlier today. Paul Canerco's. Number 14 being retired today by the White Sox. Great thing. And now three and two. Paul Konerko's a great, great ball player. Has the numbers that I would imagine probably get some Hall of Fame votes. But uh, as far as a person, just a fantastic guy and a fantastic teammate. Well-deserved. Yeah, and I heard you say earlier, legitimate in terms of that assessment. Not just one of those nice things to say about somebody. Three and two. Martinez on the move. And strike three called. Caught looking. Castellanos. Lance McCullers comes back after the 3 0 and strikes out Castellanos. Likely done with his day. He'll leave if he does with a 3 2 lead. Okay. Tuve will lead things off here in this inning, and we talked about him before the games, talking about how he's a little frustrated with the way he's been at the plate, uh, slumping in Altuve's terms. Not as bad as a lot of guys have it, uh, but definitely frustrated with some of the things he's been seeing. Now that he's watched a little bit of video, guys, him and Dave Hudgens, a hitting coach, have looked at a couple of things. He wanted to strive to be more even. He felt like he was cutting, cutting himself off a little bit. Also backed away from the plate, so wanted to move in a little bit today. Hopefully he gets things turned around here pretty quick. Thanks, Julia. She does such a great job getting all that inside information as we go to the seventh inning. 
Altuve 0 for 2 has a sack fly and has driven his in his 25th on the year. Has the count at 0 and 2. It's crazy. You start thinking, okay, I'm just being way too aggressive, swinging at bad pitches, and the next thing you know, it's 0 and 2. And now strikes out on a top pitch out of the strike zone. That's a tough little spell for Jose Altuve. Sure is. He's human. This game is tough. It'll humble you. But usually they're pretty small blips on Altuve's radar. I don't know if you've been really paying attention to it, but that's just the second strikeout of an Astros hitter today. Whoa. That's news. One out for Jonathan VR. VR was the other guy that struck out. That ended the third inning. Chops one foul. VR two for three on the day. Those two at bats coming against the left hander. Just a much stronger swing from the right side. It's a little more consistent at barreling the ball up right handed. Al Albuquerque still on the hill for the Tigers. A lot going through that mind right now. How would you describe it? You just keep seeing pitches over and over and how you feel you should react. Well I would imagine that. The, the hitters that are as good as Altuve's. You know that they're they're seeing their swing a little bit differently than most people they are seeing pitches a little bit differently than most hitters. You know he's probably breaking down like Julia said each stride each step where he is in the box. What pitches and what counts. But it's not, not a good feeling when you're up there and you know that every pitch has a chance to get you out. And even hitting 300 Altuve is searching for it right now. I think we can say safely that. We know or at least we believe it's going to come for him but oh, yeah. in his head. You just you, you get to a point where you start wondering when will I find my next hit. VR caught looking. Back to back strikeouts here in the seventh inning. It brings up George Springer. The Astros getting that lead while these shadows are moving in might be a big deal. Boy, that that's a great point because we're just watching that last pitch come in right there. You saw about three different color schemes coming in. Now you get ball in shade, then ball bright, and then ball back in shade. And George just took a Whale on pitch right there. Springer 0 for 3. Grounded into a double play in the first inning. But as you say, maybe taking that pitch, didn't see it all the way. By the way, 40,153 on hand. That's about 850 off the sellout of attendance here. And now 1 and 2 on George. I don't know whoever sets up four o'clock start times really ought to be forced to go out there and <laughs> have it bad in, in in the shadows. Force him to do a trigonometry problem in the shade and in the dark. Shadows all over the place. Look at the bullpen. You look at it. You look at it. Caught looking all the way. Three strikeouts in the seventh. We played six and a half. Astros lead it three to two.
And now Lance McCullers is, as we surmise, done with his day. And very impressive was McCullers. Blummer can talk a bit more about him as Will Harris comes on to work it here in the seventh inning. Yeah, I was thoroughly impressed with what Lance McCullers did today. Made the adjustment. Pitch well in his first start, but got a little erratic. Threw a lot of pitches in only about four and two-thirds innings. Will Harris coming on to put up some more goose eggs against those Detroit Tigers, but Lance did great. Well, six innings pitch, six hits, two earned runs, one walk, six strikeouts. Those are big league numbers. That is a quality start for that young man right there. And he looks GQ at the end of it, too. Or should I have let Julia make that statement? I don't know. He's got a lot going for him. I'll tell you what. Throwing the ball in the major leagues and facing the likes of the Detroit Tigers and Miguel Cabrera. He's got a lot going for him. Well, how about the one walk he had on the game? Intentional. Yep, that's right. And that to Miguel Cabrera. He was probably upset he was forced to walk him. I'll get this probably, guy. yeah. Struck him out in the sixth inning. have him. Tyler Collins is the seven hitter for Detroit. He'll be followed by James McCann and Hernan Perez here in the seventh. Fly ball shallow center coming on and making the play Marisnik out number one. Here's a pitch by pitch brought to you by your local steel dealers. Look at some of the strikeouts from Lance McCullers. That was the first one at fastball down in the zone. Breaking ball. That's a good hard one we've seen from him. He was going after that breaking ball. Did a good job of setting guys up to get in that two strike count. But the thing that's effective is that he had a couple different breaking balls that we've talked about that he makes the adjustment on. And when you get him set up for that breaking ball, you just paint that fastball low and away and punch him out. One out for James McCann, who is one for two with a double. Scored run number two for the Tigers. That put them in front at the time. And that came in the fifth inning. The Astros with a pair of two out runs in the sixth inning to take the lead. The other Houston run came in the third. Sack fly by Jose Altuve. Castro and Marwin Gonzalez, the other RBIs. So a chance to take game three, and that is all important for Houston. And I would imagine if you can do that, you start thinking, okay, let's split the series, get out of town, and feel like we fared well against the Tigers in their ballpark. If you're wondering, Dallas Keuchel is not throwing in this series tomorrow's game is Roberto Hernandez against Alibos Sanchez. And Sanchez for the Tigers has had a miserable time in recent starts. Two and two the count. Shadows continue to dominate between home plate and the mound. It's crazy how the light standards get involved. Yep. Now it's the bleachers and the top of the stadium coming into effect. Down on strikes. To Harris gets the first two he faces here in the seventh. And now Hernan Perez will stand in. First plate appearance on the day for Perez, taking over for Jose Iglesias. That's just a heater pumped right on by. I'm not sure what it is about Will Harris, but he does such a good job of getting on top of the baseball with that high over-the-top delivery. Maybe has a little bit of cut, a little movement to it. Whatever he's doing is just completely dominating hitters, and that pitch looked like it might have been a strike. That might have caught that top part of the zone. Hunter Wendelstead is not calling that high pitch. He's not a friend of, of the high strike, is he? There's that little cutter you kind of insinuate might be a part of the arsenal. Well, it's all, I mean, he gets, throws in the high three quarters. It's almost like he gets even more over the top, and it creates that cut. Yeah, if you get around the baseball on the outside, just a, a fraction, you'll create that cut. Two and one. Watching Harris back in spring training, 
I didn't realize this kind of stuff was was a possibility. And now two and two. Hernan Perez hitting just 087 on the season. He hasn't had a lot of chances. Twenty fourth plate appearance down on strikes. Two strikeouts for Harris. They come back to back a one two three seventh inning to the eighth we go. The Astros on top of the Tigers. Join Orbit for a birthday celebration, alien style, Saturday, May 30th. Orbit and his mascot friends will host a birthday brunch. And on Sunday, May 31st, 10,000 fans will receive Orbit face glasses presented by the Smile Generation. For more info, visit astros.com slash orbit birthday or call 1-877-9-ASTROS. Guys. Thank you, Julia. We go to the eighth inning. Astros lead over the Tigers 3-2. to two. The Astros have out hit them 8-6. to six. As Evan Gaddis leads off here in the eighth inning, 0 for 3 on the day. And I would think these shadows are making just picking up the baseball extremely difficult. Doesn't look fun from here. Under the best of circumstances, it is really a tough game. And then you add shadows and sunlight mixed in like that, and man. One eighty eight the batting average. Gaddis caught looking. That's four consecutive strikeouts now of Astros hitters. The last three have been looking. That gives you an indication maybe about the shadows going on. Degree of difficulty way up there. Brad Osmus is going out to the mound. Albuquerque came on in the sixth inning and gave up an RBI hit to Marwin Gonzalez and then got Jake Marisnik. And so that's going to do it for the big right-hander. Osmus goes to the bullpen, and it's a 3-2 lead, Houston. We will stay right here with you. Well, just like we promised earlier in the game, it's Miller time, brought to you by Miller Lite. Having some fun with that triple play that we saw earlier in the game. There were actually two in the year 1991. Caminiti to Biggio to Bagwell. Pete Harnish on the hill getting that one. to Shays. this one a little more unconventional. Fly ball down that right field line. Nice play. Good throw to third base to cut off that runner. Caminiti heads up. I think Tommy Lasorda had some base running in classes after this one. And then this one in 2004. That was with the bases loaded. Instead of coming home, Morgan Ensberg steps on third. Turns that triple play. Gets him out of that inning. And this one a big one, too. Stop that rally that the Detroit Tigers had going. This game might be a little bit different if this triple play is not turned. Yeah, if the Astros win this ball game, that's probably the play you look to.
But from that view, it looked like VR really took his time. That's how they turn triple plays and double plays on me. Take their time, make them look good. I'm not buying in, Blummer. Yeah, you're right. It would have been out by a little bit closer margin. Pretty cool stuff, though. Yeah, the Tigers had taken the lead two to one at the time, and it looked like kind of one of those breakout innings. It didn't work out that way for Detroit now. Nobody out, runner on first and second. Perfectly placed ground ball, and VR turned it. Tom Gorsolani, the left-hander, coming on to work for the Tigers. Pitcher number three on the day for Detroit. Gorzolani coming in to face Preston Tucker. And for those of you wondering if there might be a pinch hit possibility, there are no right-handed hitters on the Astros bench, only the switch hitting Hank Conger. And he's the backup catcher and would only be used in emergency situations. So it's going to be Preston Tucker coming up here to face Gorzolani. So again, four consecutive strikeouts of Astros hitters, and Blummer mentions that the last three of those all looking really tough to see. Preston Tucker will stand in. Tucker is the guy that got the two-run sixth inning started with a two-out hit. Lined one into right center field. And then Carter, Castro, and Marwin Gonzalez all followed with hits. When it was all said and done, the Astros had taken the 3-2 lead. Ten triple plays in the franchise history of the Houston Astros. How about that? I never would have guessed that. It's quite a few. Seems to me. Just saw 40% of them. Half swing going through. You know what? If, of course, you always, when you try to speed up a game, something goes wrong, but seems like you'd want to, if you're the Astros, get these innings in with these shadows being such uh, strongly impacting the game. Force the Tigers hitters to have to hit under under these circumstances. One and two the count. Third of seven between these teams on the season. Third of four right here in Detroit. One more game tomorrow. That's a 12-08 Houston start. Roberto Hernandez and Anibal Sanchez. Fly ball center field. Tucker finds a way to make contact and drives. Anthony goes back deep, but two outs here in the inning. Base is empty for Chris Carter. Carter's having a day. A couple yeah, of hits. A couple of hits on the day. Also drawing a walk. Well, we talked about how he had two multi-hit games coming into this game today, and now he has his third multi-hit game of the of the year. Julia has something for us. Well, guys, with a couple of knocks today, the average it helps out Carter's average a little bit. Uh, AJ talking about this before the game, saying that everyone gets caught up looking at Carter's average and judging his performance, but. There's a lot of things he likes that he's seen from Carter, the walks and the way he's playing defense. But he said when you've got a history, I mean, you've been playing this game a while and you have a history like the 37 home runs that came late for Carter, uh, you seem to think that things will turn around for a player. Slider stays away. And intriguing thoughts from Julia. Yeah, you hope that the power game comes back, though. For Chris Carter, to me, it's a, it's a must. As Chris fouls it off, it's two and two. Six strong innings from Lance McCullers today. Will Harris has picked up a shutout inning. And a triple play turned by the defense. That's why you show up to the ballpark, Ash. You never know what you're going to see. Yeah, amen to that. Strike three called inside corner. Caught looking is Carter. A couple of strikeouts in the inning 
And five of the last six hitters for Houston have gone down on strikes, but they lead it. seen much pop from the offense so we're going to go with the power arm and Lance McCullers can't say enough about what this kid's doing dominating stuff today absolutely good hard breaking ball throws a variation of that can throw up for a strike but getting some big strikeouts against this tough right-handed hitting lineup for the Detroit Tigers yeah take that guys that's the way you do it Colby Rasmus takes over defensively in left field. So Preston Tucker done with his day. Joe Thatcher coming on in relief of Will Harris, who pitched a great seventh inning. Got a fly ball and two strikeouts. See Thatcher's numbers on the year. Lefties hitting modest 250 against him. I think that bottom line is why he's in there right now. There's going to be a pinch hitter for Anthony Ghost, Rajay Davis, the right handed hitter. So Rajay Davis stands in, leading off the eighth inning. And Thatcher misses. Rajay Davis hitting 281 with a home run. Mostly known for that speed game. But he busts one to left field here, back at the wall. And making the grab with the leap is Colby Rasmus. Little defense again for the Astros as Rajay Davis tried to drive one out of here. That ball will find you in this game. It's amazing how often you watch this game. And a guy comes in on defensive replacement, and he's immediately tested. And Colby Rasmus, for me, actually made this play look a lot easier than it actually was. The sun just in his eyes. Rajay Davis, a guy you're not expecting to drive the ball like that, and he gets back there and makes a great play. I don't know how you viewed that one. Looking at the other angle, I, I thought uh, the ball wasn't going to get out, but with the speed of Davis, at least two, likely even three bases. Yeah. So the Astros go to the bullpen once again. They maintain the lead.
who will be followed by Miguel Cabrera. The Astros on top 3-2 here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Back into that bullpen for the Astros. Been bolstered. Neshek, one of those guys. 19th appearance. Good numbers on the season, too. It's really a nice play by Colby Rasmus. Really was. Even if the ball wasn't going to get out of here, that's uh, like you were saying, looking back into that sun, really tough, number one, to pick up the baseball. And then all the while trying to feel your way near the wall and make that play. 0 oh, and 2 the count on Kinsler. Take a look at that one once more. Yeah, just look at that mess that that ball has to get there. And as an outfielder, you got to track that. And like you said, Ash, he's going to have wall recognition because he knew he was getting near it. Feel that warning track, leap up, make the play. Great see what, play. See when he looked up into the, <laughs> the sky, the, the sun just shining on those glasses. Kinsler fouls it back. It stays at 0-2. It's a good defensive player. A lot, of, is. a lot of power with the bat. And you know, he, he has settled in nicely playing left field most of the time with Marisnik being the center fielder. It's such a luxury for A.J. Hinch to have what could be three center fielders yep. playing the outfield for him. Popped up right side, Carter drifting in foul territory. And there's out number two. And that'll bring up Miguel Cabrera. Word from the Mets now that David Wright, their third baseman, has been shut down, back flaring up. Just like any year, a lot of injuries around the big leagues. Even Miguel Cabrera trying to find an answer for these shadows here around home plate. Cabrera one for two with a walk. Oh, and two the count. See pitch number one here. It's tough. Man, that's tough. And you know what you're looking at is the bright center field backdrop. Cabrera gets a piece. Count stays at 0 and 2. Standing in the shadows, looking at the bright background, and then the ball flashes in and out of that sun to shadow area between the mound and home plate. Not easy. And Nishek using that funky delivery to create deception as it is, and then you add all those other elements into it. Tapper left side. And the play made by Marwin Gonzalez. A 1-2-3 eighth inning. The Astros hold that 3-2 lead.
Book your low fare right now at southwest.com. City of Detroit. It's the General Motors building straight ahead. Just across that river is Canada to the south. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Pat Neshek comes in and gets the work done in the eighth inning. Tell the Astros to the ninth inning, hold a 3 2 lead. And feels like a big game for the club to pick up this W in game three after losing the first two. A couple of changes for the Tigers. Harvey comes in on the hill, left hander. Brian Harvey and in center field, Rajay Davis taking over for Anthony Ghost. Lane Hardy's going to come at you. He's got four pitches fastball, cutter, curveball, changeup. Top out about 87, 88 miles an hour. Yeah, I said Harvey. It's Hardy. Thank you. Shift on again now for Jason Castro. They have moved the shortstop on the left side a little more toward the shortstop position. That's where Castro's shot went through last time. That was a big RBI hit that tied the game in the sixth inning. And then Marwin Gonzalez followed with a hit of his own. And that drove in a run and the difference maker in the game. Four straight two out hits in that inning. Again Tucker Carter Castro and Marwin Gonzalez. And it's tough at home plate and for the moment that would figure to be advantage Houston. 7 8 9 here in the inning for the Astros Castro Gonzalez and Marisnik. Three and two the count now. There's Marwin Gonzalez. Count stays at three and two. Castro's one for two on the day and has drawn a walk. Over 40,000 on hand in Detroit. Great turnout on a beautiful day. Get good baseball out of it, too. See a young man making his debut here at Comerica and Lance McCullers. Strike three called outside edge. Castro caught looking. Out number one. That's six out of the last seven Houston hitters going down on strikes. Five of those looking. And if you're looking for evidence, if it is tough to see, that might be it. Yeah, I would think so. Good grief. Marwin Gonzalez, two for three on the day, has scored a run, driven one home. Shallow in right field. Jenny Martinez will make the play. Two outs here in the ninth. For the Tigers coming up in the bottom of the ninth inning. JD Martinez will start it. He's the four hitter. Be followed by Joanna Cespedes and Nick Castellano. So eliminating Miguel Cabrera still right in the heart of that power portion of the order. Jake Marisnik, the nine hitter, stands in. That mound still in some sunlight. It won't last a whole lot longer. Oh, and two. Yeah, this has almost turned into a no contest. It's amazing. These are big league hitters. Yep. I mean, granted, the pitchers are good, but still, there should be a little more contact, you would imagine. You go back to the top of the seventh inning, and from that point, to right now hitters just don't seem to have a chance. The Astros are 0 for 8 in that span. Six strikeouts. The Tigers 
are 0 for 6 through two innings and a couple of strikeouts. Yeah, they've gotten one. The Tigers have gotten one hit since that triple play. Triple play took place to end the fifth inning. They picked up a one out single by J.D. Martinez in the sixth inning. And that's it. So that makes it one for ten. One for their last ten after that triple play. But I'm not sure the sixth inning had the sun shadow effect. May have. But certainly from the top of the seventh inning, it just appears that there's been no shot at the plate. Texas Rangers pounded away on CC Sabathia. Rangers won that one 15 to 4. Tapper third base side and it rolls foul. Rangers have been playing OK. Yeah they have been picked it up a little bit. It's like Prince Fielder's getting his mojo back too. Swinging the bat well. He's among the leaders in terms of batting average and just overall hitting now in the American League. Texas Rangers are well in front of the Oakland A's. The A's start today 13 and a half back of Houston. Angels in second, four and a half back. Seattle seven behind. And Texas seven and a half. That's at the start of play. So the Rangers, for the moment, have picked up a half a game. Marisna caught looking. That'll do it for Houston. And now the assignment is get the Tigers in the bottom of the ninth inning. Among other Tigers through the years being portrayed there. And now Luke Gregerson comes on for the ninth inning. Three more outs the Astros need to take their first game here in this series. Got the right guy in the mound, Luke Gregerson. 11 saves on the season, six for six in this month. And again, Gregerson will face the four, five, six hitters for Detroit. J.D. Martinez, Joannis Cespedes, and Nick Castellanos. The Astros start the day 27 and 16. And trying to pick up win number 28. Best record in the American League. That belongs to Kansas City at 27 and 14 at the start of the day. Shift on. Three infielders on the left side. J.D. Martinez one for three on the day. Had a sixth inning single. And Gregerson falls behind.
Ball and a strike. Very nice day for Lance McCullers. Gregerson out in front, one and two. Good sinker from Gregerson, good slider. There was a lot of sliders. Now these first two hitters, J.D. Martinez and Yoannis Cespedes, would be part of the Tigers' murderer's row, but number one is down. J.D. Martinez strikes out for the second time on the day. A big first out here at the bottom of the ninth inning. First out is always that biggest one. See throughout the day, these Astros pitchers, especially Lance McCullers and now Gregerson, really throwing that good, hard down slider. Yeah, the shadow effect appears to be still a big part of the equation. Yohannes Cespedes is 0 for 3. Pirates lead over the Mets 8-2 in the ninth inning. Twins lead the White Sox 4-3. Paul Canerico getting his number retired. And 2-0 and the count. No time for the walk, that's for certain. Ex-Oakland A's matchup right here. Luke Gregerson and Joanna Cespedes, both members of the Oakland A's. Two and one the count. A 2 0 auto take. Now Cespedes now bouncing from the A's to the Red Sox and now to the Tigers. Surprising to me. Two and two. I like him, and the Detroit Tigers coaching staff had a lot of good things to say about Joanna also. They like the way he plays left field on top of all the offense he brings. He's down on strike. So Gregerson punches out J.D. Martinez and now Yuena Cespedes. And two outs with the bases empty for Nick Castellanos. Such good late break on Luke Gregerson's slider. Just seems that every time a batter starts to swing at that slider, it immediately breaks away from their barrel. Castellanos has had a long day with the bat. He's grounded into a double play and struck out twice. Callable pitch. Not with Hunter back there. Apparently pretty, not. Pretty tight. Bat started, but he held it back. 2-0. One big out to get. Tigers won the first two games of the series. And now two and one. Castellanos appear to be taking all the way. I don't know if you're Brad Osmus, how you play that. Do you want the one big swing or draw a walk and try to get something going? Castro tried to bring that one back. Very close pitch. Three and one. Let's see that last pitch. And now three and two. How about the sinker today? Seen a couple hitters counts to Suspedis and now Castellanos 2 0 3 1. He took the 2 0 pitch, but this 3 1 sinker down in the zone was pretty filthy. Down to a strike. Fouled right side. So we do it again at 3 and 2. It's a good job spoiling that pitch by Castellanos. Good 3-2 slider on that outer edge.
Big pitch. And again fouled on the right side. Keep rubbing up that baseball. Actually talking to some of these pitchers, I'm not sure if the mud is the same that they keep rubbing on these baseballs, but they rub them up so early in the game that they, they have a tendency to dry out by the time they get into these pitchers' hands. Get a little chalky. Hit on the ground right at shortstop. Marlon Gonzalez, and that'll do it. The Astros pick game three here in the series and now have a chance to have a 2-2 series if they can win one tomorrow. Luke Gregerson picks up the save, his 11th on the year. And a lot of guys involved in this W and a good one. And you can just get the sense that the Astros are going to embrace this win here in Detroit. Yeah, they definitely entered. They got good pitching from Lance McCullers to start this out. Some timely hitting. Great defense behind him with that triple play. A lot of good things happening, but not too discouraged by losing those first two games of this series so far. And Lance McCullers with the 